Hello everyone, welcome back. This is CC Cycle 2 and Week 6 Memory Work Ideas and at home ideas for homeschooling with CC. So we're going to start with the memory work and then at the end of the video we'll get to ideas and fun things that we can do at home to incorporate all the things we're learning for Foundations Memory Work this week at home. All right, so for math, we are skip counting the 11s and the 12s. So for the 11s, we skip count this to the tune of row, row, row your boat. So we are naturally going to skip count our 11s as we row our boats. So you can go from side to side, you can stay on one side. And a way to make this fun is to maybe start out like the river is really calm. And so you're doing it a lot really slow and soft, 11, 22, 33. 44 but then each time that you do different repetitions going through the 11s you can maybe get a little bit more and more exciting and faster and louder as the river rapids change so that will be a fun way to skip count the 11s this week for the 12s we sing it to the tune of here we go around the mulberry bush and so for this we are going to have something in the middle of the room, maybe a parent or a table or whatever you have in your class that would work. And we're going to go around that item, a stationary item, as we skip count our 12s, just to the tune. So uh, that is how we'll do the, the 11s and 12s for math this week. For English, we are learning possessive pronouns. And so as always during this portion of our English, we'll start out by explaining what is a possessive pronoun. And basically explaining that that means that something belongs to somebody, right? Somebody possesses something. It's in your possession. So I have here just a little car as example that if it's mine, I would say mine. If it's yours, I would say yours. And then for a third person, his, hers, or its. And so just explaining that it means that it belongs to somebody, right? So the possessive pronouns, we're going to do it the same way, adding on to the chicken dance song, tune, and we have our nominative, our objective, and this week, possessive pronouns, mine, yours, his, hers, it's, ours, yours, theirs, and that's how it will go this week. So all together, that's nominative pronouns, I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, Objective pronouns, me, you, him, her, it, us, you, them. Possessive pronouns, mine, yours, his, hers, it's, ours, yours, theirs. And so that's this week. For history, we have Tell Me About the Renaissance. I love history and timeline uh, because they give us a chance to incorporate another learning style, which is using our ASL hand motions or just hand motions in general to express a given topic. So for history this week, we're going to be using some of the same motions that we use in timeline for consistency, and then some other motions that just go along with what we're saying. So during the Renaissance period, we're going to do the sign for Renaissance that we do in our timeline. I think it's week 12, but basically when we say Renaissance, we hold our hand at our stomach and then we bring it onto our, our right hand, onto our palm as a way of saying rebirth. So Renaissance. So during the Renaissance period from 1350 to 1600, when we say Leonardo da Vinci, da Vinci we're going to make an L for Leonardo. And he was a famous inventor. So what we're going to do is we're going to snap when we say a famous inventor. Or you could just go like you're having a light bulb go off. A famous inventor. Okay, then we have Shakespeare. So we're going to make an S. So Shakespeare was a famous playwright. So what we're going to do for that is do like a dramatic bow. So Shakespeare, a famous playwright. Then we have Michelangelo, a famous artist. So for that, we're going to do our M for Michelangelo. And for artist, we're going to take our hand like it's a paintbrush. And Michelangelo is known for painting the ceiling of the church. So we're going to go like this, like we're painting. You could, you could even do it on the side, but that's what we'll do for uh, Michelangelo. If you wanted to change it up a little bit, you could also do like you're sculpting something. He was also known for his sculpting. So uh, that is Michelangelo. And then for Copernicus, we're going to do a C. Copernicus, a famous scientist. And so for that, we're going to look 
like we're looking into a microscope and a scientist. And those are our motions for history. So all together, that's during the Renaissance period. Then we have L for Leonardo, who was a famous inventor. So we're going to go like we have our, a light bulb going off or you can snap. Some kids can't quite snap yet. So that's why I offer the idea for a light bulb going off. Then you have Shakespeare S, a famous playwright, Val. And then you have Michelangelo M, a famous artist. And then you have Copernicus, famous scientist. And those are our motions for the Renaissance. Okay, for Latin, we have our second week of our future tense. And uh, same like we did last week, we will bring out our bow and we'll talk, we'll stand in a line and talk about how uh, the bow is here now, but in the future, it will be somewhere else. So the future tense, the bow, we say we use a bow because the first sound is bow. So in the future, the bow will be over here. So, and as we say our tenses, we pass the bow down the line. So bow, bis, bit, bimis, bitis, bunt. And at that point, somebody can put it on the top of their head. You, a teacher, uh, I mean, a, a student's parent, and uh, just have fun with it that way. And we sing that to the tune of Three Blind Mice. So another option would be to just sing it while you cover your eyes um, to the tune. Many different options of things that you could do with that. But okay, for a timeline, we have India's Mauryan Empire. So the point here for India's Mauryan Empire, they were known for their highways. And so we're going to do the sign for road. Then we have Mayans of Mesoamerica. They were known for building those pyramids that have flat edges. And so we're going to go like this for Mayans of Mesoamerica. Then we have Punic words. We're going to make a P. Your hands face down like this. Punic wars. Okay. Then we have Rome conquers Greece. So we're going to do an R on the side for conquers. And Greece is an ASLG. We put it here again, like last week, just right here over our nose, representing the helmets that they would wear in battle. Then we have Roman dictator, Julius Caesar. So for that, we're going to do like a dictator, like we're saluting to a dictator, Roman dictator, Julius Caesar, make a J. Then we have Caesar Augustus and the Pax Romana. So we do the C and bring our hands down from our shoulder down to our waist, representing a sash of royalty. So Caesar Augustus and the Pax Romana. And that's the sign for peace. Just bring your palms together, turn them, and come out peacefully. And then the last one is John, J for John, the Baptist. We take our hands like this, and then we turn them to the side as like we're somebody's getting baptized. And that is all of our timeline motions and what they mean for this week. For geography, we have the European mountains. And for that, if your family is able to eat uh, chocolate chips, it's just a fun thing to do. I like to bring in the white chocolate chip pieces and put those on all of the locations for the European mountains. And then we sing it to the tune of, we'll be coming around the European mountains. It's to the tune of, we'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. And it sounds like this. We'll be coming around the European mountains. We'll be coming around the European mountains. Pyrenees, Alps, Carpathians, Caucasus, Ural, Matterhorn. We're coming around the European mountains. All right. For science, we have how do animals react to environmental change? And so for this, we're going to do hand motions as we explain it. So in reaction to environmental change, animals will adapt. You can make two A's. This is an A and you can go like this for adapt. That's one way. Or you can do the sign for change, right? So they will adapt, migrate. And the sign for migrate is to take your hands like this and then move your fingers. You're moving from one place to another. So you're migrating from here to here. So that's the sign for migrate. You could also flap your arms like birds as birds migrate from one place to another. And then the last one is hibernate. And so for hibernate, you can do a B for bear going into a cave, right? B moving into the cave, or you could just go like you're sleeping on your hands and that can be hibernate. Okay. So those are some options for hand motions for science. 
And that is everything for memory work. All right, for review this week, since we have all six weeks now under our belt, it is fun to do something like bingo where you can cover a lot of ground in one game. So I will show a picture here of the bingo that we use and we got that on CC Connected. It was on the old CC version, but I think that it has been added. I've requested that, so hopefully it's on there now. And um, that is a great way to do review for weeks five or six, anything past that, because you, you can fill out the whole card with all the information you've covered for all the weeks so far. And last but not least, at home this week, we're going to be making it fun with some additions of videos and readings and read-alouds and whatnot. So I thought I'd share some of those things with you. Uh, for read-alouds, uh, you can always read the Who Was series. If you have that, you can uh, check those books out from the library or if you just have the series. Uh, this week, it would be good to read about Who Was Leonardo da Vinci or Shakespeare. Uh, those two are both options in the Who Was series. Cat in the Hat has lots of videos on Netflix that are relatable to lots of the science this week. So they have one about hibernation. They have a couple about ad adapting and migration. Um, it's season one, episodes 27, episode 17, season two, episode nine, and season two, episode 17. All of those, oh, season one, episode one as well. Uh, all of those are related to what we're learning in science. So that is from Cat in the Hat. Magic School Bus Rides Again also has a video that you can watch. And that's on Netflix as well. And it's called Hide and Seek. And that's about adapting. And then this week, I thought that it would be fun to um, make... There are several options on the sheet that I have from CC Connected that I mentioned last week. But this week, we thought it'd be fun to make a Crustade au Pomme, which is a fancy apple crisp. And that is a yummy dessert originating out of the Pyrenees area. So we're studying the Pyrenees mountains and the Alps and all that. So apple crisp would be a fun dessert to, to eat. And that is one fun thing that we could do eating wise to incorporate with our geography as eating our geography this week. We'll also obviously use our timeline cards for uh, reading the backs of them for all of our seven history points this week of our timeline. So what we usually do for that is just do one or two a day as we homeschool. We homeschool four days out of the week, so typically we'll do three on one of the days. And we just read them, and anything that's of interest or uh, that piques some curiosity, we'll dig a little bit more into that. And so that's how we use our timeline cards. Uh, we'll break out maps, we'll break out atlases, uh, do research online just to get an understanding of what's happening on each of those timeline cards. And then we also have our indescribable devotions. And for this week, week six, there is one on page 80, which way to go. And then there's also page 130 and 130 is about eclipse. So um, those would be some applicable devotions out of our science devotional by Louis Giglio, indescribable. That would be great to go through together as a family this week or even in class. So uh, I hope that is helpful. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. For those of you that have expressed interest in our YouTube channel where we're sharing our homesteading and barn renovation journey, definitely go check it out. We've got some of our first videos up there to share and I will add that link below to this video in the description as well. But looking forward to seeing you guys for week seven. I hope you all have a fantastic break if you're breaking at week six. And I will see you next time. Bye.